Hey everybody, welcome back. I am bored. COVID made me bored, and today at the table, I'm playing Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded. Now, just want to let you guys know, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so my voice is a little roughed up, and I might be coughing here or there, but that has not stopped me from being bored. And glad that you can join me and be bored with me right now. Uh, I am picked this game up uh, a couple weeks ago. It's been out for a while. This is a, uh, I guess, a, the reloaded aspect of this is the, I guess, second version. There was another game called Run, Fight, or Die, I think by the same publisher, by the same um, designer. And I think this reloaded version streamlined a few things, removed a couple items maybe that weighed down the game or the gameplay. This is sort of a lightweight, zombie-themed, dice-chucking game, Yahtzee style. And the reason I have it, <laughs> there is no reason. I have no reasons for, for most of the games I buy, just for the fact that it had an intriguing theme. While you're, this is for one to four players, and I'm going to call this a competitive game. Even though you're not directly competing with each other, this is, at the end of the day, uh, a victory point game. You're trying to, you're, you're, you're a bunch of survivors stuck in the town, and you're trying to get your way out. You're running through different areas of the town, trying to scavenge for anything that you can do to survive while a horde of zombies are after you on your tail and moving in closer and closer with one crazy, ambitious mutant zombie that just really is out to get you. And while you're kind of moving together as a group, trying to escape the town line together, because one of the losing conditions is if any one of the players dies, you lose the game. So it is, you're moving together. You're not technically working together. You're not helping each other. And Quite frankly, I believe it. If, if it was a zombie apocalypse right now, who would I be thinking about other than myself? So the theme works well in this game. And, it, and while it is sort of competitive in that nature, you're trying to move together. You, you want to escape together. Uh, you also have opportunity to sort of screw another person up by sending zombies their way. You kind of threw a rock zombie took the bait and went to the other other players tile to uh, to attack them so it's kind of funny like that and uh, i enjoy the theme and it mechanically it kind of works more like a tower defense but thematically and sort of visually well not visually but i guess uh you're in your mental space you are imagining you are moving and running away you're, you're not trying to to uh you know you don't got all the the, the skills and the and, and the armory necessary to take down these uh zombies you're a regular human person that got trapped, woke up, and it was a zombie apocalypse 28 days later. So <clears throat> it functions, though, like a tower defense. And once I start playing, you'll sort of see it. And that was one of the aspects I thought was kind of interesting. I only have one tower defense game, which is Robotech, um, uh, Attack on the SDF-1. And I thought, oh, this has a, you know, a zombie theme. Looks interesting. Very simple. Wasn't looking for a complicated game. Uh, and uh, it... it the price is right. So um, in terms of uh, components and the rule book, very straightforward, although I think the rule book itself, I think some people noted that it was extremely large. If you look at this, it takes up pretty much the size of the box. And you know what? I don't, I don't see any problem with this because the one thing I like about this is, first of all, uh, with a larger rule book, given depending on the size of the font, it thins out the rule book so it's not as thick. And then on top of that, it's not shifting around in the box as much. So it doesn't bother me. It is big. And, uh, but it's very clear uh, for me to understand. And <clears throat> you'll be uh, going through several phases. Your first phase will be sort of your player phase where the players will be, each player will take a turn uh, rolling their dice and they'll be assigning the dice to do certain actions. And I'll go to that in just a minute. You've got loot cards, you've got, uh, you know, you find other survivors that are willing to follow you and, and you're, you're a leader, uh, you earn leadership points. Uh, there is a zombie mutant that if you so happen to uh, uh, hurt or, or take down the zombie mutant, you also earn points. So even once all four of you or up to four of you escape the town, uh, you count up your victory points and the person with the highest points is deemed the best survivor. But at the end of the day, you're all trying to get through it together. So at the back of the rulebook, there is something called a solo cam campaign, which disappointingly, I found out afterwards, is that you need additional game materials needed to play the solo campaign available at grayfoxgames.com. So this is produced by Gray Fox Games. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was a little bit disappointing. 
you have to go online, purchase, I think it's a couple sets of cards to help run the campaign and a save progress or something like that. Uh, it ends up looking, the, the setup is a little bit different where you're not combing through a deck of locations. It's going to be a grid of locations. It reminds me a lot now like uh, Maximum Apocalypse, so I don't care. If I wanted the grid layout, Zombie Apocalypse, I would switch over to Maximum Apocalypse. This is sort of the light-hearted roll chuck dice and, and uh, try to survive the zombies. And I can see myself playing with my nephews or my kids. Uh, when they're old enough to to play this, the artwork is not terrible. It's not super scary. I mean, if you look at it, I mean, no, no, it's not 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 terrible. It's it's kind of a light, realistic um, artwork. You'll be choosing one out of five, or sorry, four, five, sorry, five possible characters in the game. Uh, there is an expansion to this, which adds a fifth and sixth player, so you can actually have up to six people playing. But uh, I don't really see myself going beyond four. So you can choose the Prom Queen, and you'll notice that each character has some stats. They've got some special abilities, and this is, again, Yahtzee-like. So if you roll the dice and you want to utilize that ability, you can uh, go ahead and, and uh, activate, I guess, the ability here. And each player has three. They also have their health. So here's the Prom Queen. Here is the Coach. And you'll see it each gives you a little bit um, different variety, which I think is kind of nice. I wouldn't say they're dramatically different, uh, but there's enough there to say, hey, I want to be the ex-cop, not the coach. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Oops. And then the businessman. Sorry, that was the ex-cop businessman. And hey, upside down, the army vet. The army vet there. So they all have pretty much the same amount of health. I don't think any particular player has more than the other. You do have the ability to extend, I guess, quote unquote, your health because if you get more followers, and I'll explain that as I go along. Your main board, uh, which by the way, I want to just sort of mention the uh, player tiles, nice and thick. I, I like that. Um, I I've been really um, liking dual layer boards, so I kind of wish that something about this was dual layer, but it's okay. Not not the uh, end of the world. And then you've got uh, your uh, your board. And it's broken into three zones. And this is sort of the tower defense aspect of this. Because your player board will be down here. And you'll be placing it like that. Zombies will be spawning. And they're every zombie phase during your turn. They will be moving closer and closer to, to you. So this is you. And once they land on your board, you get, you get bitten. You get hurt. You get injured. And you take a wound. <clears throat> so... Again, it's kind of tower defense-like because the zombies are moving towards that one location, which is you. But thematically, you're running away, and if you're a little slow, they're gaining on you. The artwork on this is, is really nice. Uh, I thought it's kind of neat. You can tell that they're slowly gaining up on you. And you'll see that uh, there's sort of a, a dice reference. These are the dice that you are able to assign or use and it would impact these locations. So for example, here in zone one, which is the zone closest to you, you can assign a club and bat two zombies dead, just bash their brains in. You can take a shotgun and shoot one in this zone, as well as this zone, as well as this zone. And you can also run in any one of the zones, you can apply that, which is shifting above. I'm gonna make some uh, rule changes, some site variations for my, when I play solo. But when you're playing co-op, if you had a couple zombies in zone three and you decide to run away from them, obviously there's no fourth zone. So when you run away, you'll be moving the zombie off of this zone three into some, of some other player's zone. And that's the competitiveness. So if I had a second player or a third or fourth player, I could choose. I'm going to run away from this zombie. Here's the zombie figure right here. I'm going to move away from this zombie and I'm going to push him off into, oh, hey, Joe, you take this zombie. It looks like you have a great bunch over there. Send them over that way. That's the kind of fun nature of this. You're kind of messing up with your, your, your so-called friends uh, and trying to mitigate the number of zombies you have. So that's the player board. Very simple. Doesn't take up a lot of space. <clears throat> and of course, it comes with miniatures. There's a whole bag of 50 somewhat zombies. There's no particular difference between the two other than the gender and the color. So the female zombie is blue and the male zombie is uh, orange. Uh, the female zombie, I find, she leans a little too awkward. I don't know if you can see that. You can't really tell, but she leans very heavily forward. And maybe that's it was meant to be like that, but I kind of try to push her up to stand stand more straight because look at, look at this guy. He stands nice and straight. He stands nice and straight. So those are the zombies spawning out. 
there is sort of initial setup that you have when you're going through. And you've got <clears throat> loot cards. So as you are traversing through the town, you are scavenging for various kinds of loot. And uh, in the rule book, there is no particular rule to state that you have a limit on the number of loot cards you can hold. So I'm going with unlimited, as well as it doesn't tell you exactly the timing. So you can play these cards at any time during your turn. Uh, as far as I understand, uh, when you are, say for example, the shotgun, you can discard to kill three zombies in any one zone. Now, what I don't understand and what wasn't very explicit, and I have to check BGG forums, is whether or not that applies only to your zone. I can't imagine you're helping someone else's zone, because why would you, at zone three, when you want to run away, push zombies into another player's zone three, but yet you can go ahead and you can start shooting in other people's zones. So the way I play it is my specific zone, in any one zone that's on my board. So you're going to have the shotgun, chainsaw, binoculars. So you'll have some item cards that help you, uh, like reroll dice, uh, maybe turn a dice to something that you need. Uh, and you'll have weapons, which is something that can help you battle the swarm of zombies that's coming onto your board uh, or potentially mitigate the, the mutant zombie that's coming after you. In this game, the mutant zombie doesn't really ever get killed. You sort of hold them back. There's a sleep, a sleep state and an awakened state. At the beginning of the game, he starts off asleep. There are certain conditions and certain cards that will activate him, and he becomes awake. And he'll be given a certain amount of health represented by these tokens. I think uh, it's based on the number of players, and as far as I understand, it would be three tokens per player, or three tokens per player that's playing um, for, for his health. And as you give him a shotgun blast or some kind of weapon to, to hit him, he never moves up to your zone three. He's always in the furthest zone, which is not zone three. It's, it, I guess he's further away. He's kind of trailing everyone and but coming close, but you can always shoot him with a shotgun. You can never bat him, but there are other cards and loot that allow you to attack him, I guess, directly. And each of these have a number on the back, which is, again, victory points. So as you are defeating or taking health off this uh, zombie or mutant zombie, you will be collecting his health tokens and at the end of the game, flipping them over and seeing how much victory points that you got out of it. <clears throat> and he can be reawakened multiple times throughout the game. And on top of that, his health does stack. So for example, if he's on the, if he's awakened and he's got like three health left, and then all of a sudden another card triggers his awakened state, he would add another set of uh, health tokens on top of the three that he already has. While the mutant zombie is awakened, you will have a mutant uh, zombie phase. So if he's not awakened, you skip this phase completely. You just move into the uh, zombie moves forward phase or advancing phase. And this is controlled. What he does is controlled by this deck. He doesn't move, but he can attack you. He can, um, I guess, summon more zombies to appear, or he can um, enable zombies to move a little bit faster and move one zone forward to you. So there's a variety of actions or effects that take place when you go through the mutant zombie phase, provided that he's awake. You have a couple tokens for keeping track of health. I tend to use dice more often than not, but um, these, these uh, blood tokens, not too bad because your maximum health usually is around six. And you can see here, sorry, I forgot to go back. Here is what the now, mutant zombie looks like. Now, this was a Kickstarter, I believe, and the Kickstarter version actually came with an actual minifigure. Um, you know what? He looks very similar to hmm, another game I have, Something of War, and it kind of looks like... Um, I forgot the name already. The Berserker. Yeah, so I could always pull up the Berserker from Gears of War and just stuff, stuff uh, her on the board here. So it's double-sided, and you just place the tokens once he's, once he's activated on the board, and you know that he is coming after you. And here we go, we get to the main affair right here, which is the dice. The dice, you have six dice, and on your turn you'll be rolling these dice. And whatever you get, um, I think three, you get three chances to re-roll, so very Yahtzee style. The only ones you cannot re-roll is if it lands on this face. This is a zombie face. Now, the zombie face means that during the zombie spawn phase, you'll be adding one zombie per zombie face dice rolled in addition to the base amount, which I believe is three. So three zombies, default three zombies always show up in your zone three. And on that spawn phase, 
any more uh, dice that you've rolled with a zombie face, you'll add that additional amount. You also got your run. You've got a backpack, which allows you several things depending on how you use it. There's a nice, easy reference guide that tells you. So if you have the bat, if you roll a bat, you can kill two zombies in zone one. If you have the gun, you can kill one zombie in any zone or do one damage to the mutant. You can run, and that's moving one zombie back one zone. And with the backpack, if you choose to use just one, you draw a loot card. If you choose to use two, you draw a follower, and I'll show you who that is. And then if you use three, so all three at the same time, you can draw two followers, and then you get to choose and keep one of them. You also have the explorer icon. At the end of the day, they, while you're trying to run away, the object is to reach the town line. So you've escaped the town and you have successfully survived your town's zombie apocalypse. Somewhere in the location card, you will find this town line and that is your goal. There's a little bit of sort of a setup. So you have this map icon and depending how you use your map icon when you roll, if you assign one, you get to draw one location and you do what's called the bad effect. And I'll show you the, the location card. If you draw two, you have to do both the bad and the good. And if you Sorry, if you use two um, map icons, you do both. If you use three, you get to only do the good side. And obviously the zombie one cannot be rolled. On your roll, if you so happen to get five zombie faces, right away the uh, mutant zombie will awaken. And there'll be text and cards throughout the game that ask you to draw leadership tokens. I don't use the leadership tokens because I mostly game solo. And with my solo variant, I guess if you want to call it, I don't really care for keeping track of points. So I don't even have any of the... Uh, the, not all the punch boards punched out. Um, these two cards here, that's for a solo campaign. That has nothing to do with it. They gave it to you anyways, and this is sort of your first player marker. Uh, they provided partial, partial um, materials for your solo campaign. So these are the leadership tokens. Whenever you have a card that tells you a leadership token or take a leadership token, you would take it, and on its backside, you get, again, some random victory points that you can add up uh, at the end of the game. <clears throat> So there you go. You'll be re-rolling up to three times, and whatever dice you assign, whatever you want to keep, you'll assign it. And the trick is, well, not the trick, but the, I guess the rule is, you have to use all of them. So let's just say I have the one map here, and oh, I don't want to do the bad effect of a location. I have to. I don't have a choice. So let's go to those locations, first of all. So you've got a stack of location cards. And each of these represent different areas of the town. So you've got the old barn, the old bridge, and you'll see that for each of these locations, it has a on the top, the bad effect, and at the bottom, the good effect. So as I was mentioning, when you assign that map icon or that map dice face, if you assign one, you have to do the bad, and it's usually something bad. You take a wound, a zombie comes and attacks you, you awaken the zombie mutant. One of those things can happen. If you use or assign two map uh, dice faces, you can do the top and the bottom. You have to do, sorry, the, not can, you have to do the top and the bottom. The bottom is the good. And if you assign three map faces, you just do the good. So because you have to use the dice, you could be really messed up if all you're rolling is just that one map and then you have to do the negative aspect of all the locations. There is one location which is called the town line. And if you so happen to draw the town line, the game ends and immediately your whole group has reached the town line, they've gotten over, they found that bus, and they got out of there. Oh, that sounds a lot like Maximum Apocalypse. And that's it. You count your VPs, and you're done. That is a, uh, one of the ending conditions for the game, as well as a player dying. That's also an ending condition. And I believe there was one more ending condition as well, which, you know what? I don't think I've ever encountered it, so I'm just going to quickly refer and see what that end condition is. Ah, the mutant zombie runs out of zombie tokens, and there are no zombie to tokens available in the supply. So there's usually quite a bit. There's at least, I don't know, I'd say 20, 25 tokens maybe that you have. So, But because I play mostly solo, that never happens. So at the beginning of the game, you'll be taking and shuffling these location cards, taking out the town line. You're going to shuffle all these cards, you're going to draw five, and then you're going to shuffle the town line in the bottom five or in, in the pile of five that you have. That will go on the bottom. And then, depending on the number of players, I believe you'll be taking five locations, <coughs> and you'll be uh, shuffling those and putting those in the, um, the location stack. 
so that you have your locations that you'll be going through. Uh, let me just quickly double check to make sure I have that right, because I feel like it's three and not five. Uh, selecting five location cards at random and shuffling the town line card, placing an additional three location cards per player. So I would have the bottom five, and then as a solo player, or depending on the number of players, if I'm solo, I would do three. But I think for solo, you can actually do more than that. You can do five if there's a solo mode for that, um, or six. And then if I had a second player, I'd do six, and then nine for three players, and then 12 for four players. And that basically helps... I guess, balance the gameplay in terms of the amount of zombies that will be coming at you and to the time that it takes you to find the town line. So there is a small reference card for solo mode, which is not the solo campaign, it's just solo mode. So if you want to do it easy, you just set it up as if you're doing a two-player game. So you'll have a total of uh, five locations that you shuffle the town line in, and then on top of that, you'll be putting uh, six. Uh, actually, no, it's a six. No, as if a two player game. So, six location cards. And then you're going to add three zombie tokens to the mutant zombie. So, that's whenever he awakens. And I think he awakens with a minimum of three. And it's really bad. I should really check these rules before I uh, do a film. But he, uh, he will awaken and he will have uh, zombie tokens equal to the number of players in the game plus one. So if it was just me, it would be two, but in this game, when I'm playing solo, I would add three, so he would have a total of five. Or you can do normal, which you add four zombie tokens to the mutant zombie, or hard, which you can add five. So he would have a total of seven health if I were to do solo. The other type of cards that you get, in addition to your location cards, are the followers. Followers are people just so happen you come across. And uh, you can, they just want to come with you. You're, you've become an inspiration to them that you're surviving with a, a bat and a shotgun and they have nothing other than a toothpick. So they want to come with you. They want to help you. But not all of them are helpful. So you're going to see that there's a... The number at the top means, again, victory points. Anything in that sort of style is victory points. And if you have a set number of followers that are still with you by the end of the game, they would be included in terms of your victory points. But again, I ignore it during solo play and I would just ignore it in general. That's not really what I care to do. I just want to escape. The, uh, the follower has usually some kind of ability or something, that an effect that takes place. So the minus means it's a negative effect. Uh, they also have a certain amount of health. So while you are running, they're running with you, and let's just say a, zomb a zombie has moved from zone one into you, onto your board, and you're going to about to take some damage. Well, you're a fast thinker. You push the shifty salesman in front of the zombie, and he takes two bites, and he's dead, saving you. That's the point. You've got the screaming cheerleader. This is something that happens when you take a wound. If you take a wound, you would be adding two zombies to your zone. The kindly grandma, if she dies, you draw two loot. So it's kind of positive and negative, depending on how you look at it. Uh, if this one dies, you draw another follower. And here's a positive effect. Once per turn, set a non-zombie die to a run result, which is kind of nice, and gives you an extra uh, single health. So they all, there's quite a few, and they all provide some kind of effect. It could be positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, a death effect or an effect that takes place when, when it's wounded. And it, it mixes the game up. So you're never sure what you're going to get and who, who's going to be following you, whether or not they're really helpful or not. So that is basically the summary of the game. I'm going to do the setup. I'm going to do a setup for a solo run. So I will have six location cards on top of my standard uh, five, which the town line is shuffled in. I will show you how many zombies start at the beginning of the game. And uh, once I get the board up, we'll, uh, we'll start running from those zombies and see how I do. Hopefully better than compared to most of my other uh, videos. I'll see you soon. Okay, I'm back. I've got my table set up for Run, Fight, or Die Reloaded. I've decided to go with the X-Cop. And I forgot to mention it in sort of my intro overview. Uh, you'll see when it comes to their special abilities, uh, when you can actually use the uh, zombie face that uh, that you end up rolling because you can't re-roll zombie faces this is one of those rare games where the consequence can sort of be turned into a uh, positive for you so yeah it's negative you don't want to have more zombies coming at you uh, on during the zombie spawn phase but at the same time if you do roll it you can at least benefit from it so i like that that helps balance those ah oh, god awful rules where you get you know four zombie dice and you've got nothing to do 
but you do. You still can use to hopefully use to some ability um, that you have. I've got my location card set up. So that was the bottom five with the town line shuffled in there. And above that would be another six location cards based on a two player game. I've got my mutant zombie who's not awakened yet, but his health tokens are sitting right there up to seven, ready to go. And I've got my his uh, mutant uh, activation deck as well as my loot deck. And I've got my followers. So the beginning of the game goes through the hero phase, each hero going through their turn. And <clears throat> then you'll go into the uh, mutant zombie, or the, sorry, the um, uh, the mutant phase, where uh, if the mutant is awakened, you would go ahead and do uh, do their movement. So let me just see here. The action phase, right? That's what we call it. Action phase. And you roll your dice up to three times. You resolve the effect in the order of your choosing. And, uh, and during that time, you can play your loots. Then if the mutant, uh, mutant zombie is awake, you do his phase, and then you do the advanced zombie phase. And that's per player. So at the beginning, when you're doing the initial setup, you have a basic number of zombies that are already on the board. You have two in zone one, three in zone two, and four in zone three. So I'm going to start my solo. Now, one of the things I'm going to make a slight change on, because I'm only playing solo, is normally when you run, if I were to apply the run effect on one of these zombies to move them off the board, in standard solo play, you would remove them off completely. It's just like you've totally escaped them, they don't know where you are, and you've lost them, lost sight of them completely. But when I play solo, just to make things a little bit more spicy, I can only run from zone and zone one and zone two. In zone three, if I apply the run, it doesn't do anything. They don't go anywhere. So basically, my zone three could potentially be packed with a ton of zombies, but I find it makes it more interesting. Um, this game in itself, I don't think is complicated. I don't think it's difficult. But it depend, does depend on the type of rolls you get. So you get bad rolls like me, then you'll end up with quite a bit of zombies. And for the most part, I think I have about a 75% win ratio so far. Uh, it hasn't been terrible, but uh, I have those moments where they do stack up very quickly and I'm unable to mitigate. And the next thing you know, uh, that's it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm rolling. So as you can see, I rolled two zombie faces already, and which means I cannot re-roll them. And I get two bat and two loot. Or sorry, yeah, two backpacks. So I'm gonna try to re-roll this one. I get another backpack, I'm gonna try to re-roll. Actually, I'm gonna re-roll these two. Okay, so I get another zombie face and another bat. So if I look at my ability chart, I actually don't have enough to do any of these abilities. I would need a shotgun symbol in order to do something. So that's unfortunate, but that's okay. As of right now, that doesn't affect me until my zombie phase. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend this one loot bag that I have or the backpack to draw a loot card. And remember, as far as I understand, I didn't see any uh, specific rules. You can hold as many loot cards as you want to, and you can use them at any time during your turn. So this one's a book of the dead. Discard, uh, discard this card to kill two zombies anywhere on your board or do one damage to the mutant zombie. So I'm going to hold on to that. I'll just put it here for now. And I'm going to use one of these uh, bat symbols to bat off two of the zombies that are right in my zone one. I can only apply it in zone one. I cannot bat them in zone two or three because they're too far away. And that's it. This one, while I'm supposed to use it, I can't because there's no other zombies to use. So that one is sort of a lost dice. And that's it. So now if there was a mutant zombie that was awake, if he was awake, you would now draw a card from here, do whatever it says. But now, instead, we're going to go <clears throat> to uh, the advance a zombie phase, which uh, all these zoom zombies uh, move forward, and you'll be spawning the basic number, which is three, always three in zone three, plus the number of zombie phases that you rolled. So I'm going to pull out another three. Oh, that's a nice happy bunch there. Okay. And that ends my turn. It would now pass to the next player's turn to go through that. In terms of downtime, there's not a lot of downtime. I mean, it's it's fairly quick. You only have a potential of six actions that you can do. Uh, and if you know exactly what you're trying to accomplish, then that can go very quickly. So I don't really think there's a, a huge downtime in this game. So I rolled a zombie face. I've got two shotgun, a bat, and a run. So I don't really need the run. Uh, I'm going to roll, re-roll these two. I'm hoping for a map. Thank you very much. And I'm going to roll one more for another map. Perfect. Sir. So I've got a zombie face. Can't do anything about that. I'm going to go ahead, use... Uh, actually, I'm going to use the two maps first. 
and use the two maps first to draw a location card. So remember, my, my goal is to find the town line. So sitting here, shooting, batting, collecting loot, that's all fine and running, that's all fine, but it's not gonna get you to the end of the game unless you actually start going through these locations. So I've rolled and I'm assigning two map. Now I could separate them if I wanted to. I could use one, two, if I want to, and I would actually draw two location cards one at a time, but I would be re resolving for both of them the bad effect. If I assign two maps, I'm, a, I'm drawing one location card and I resolve both the good and the bad. So I'm gonna do that. So I draw the end, dead end of the alley, so I do the negative effect first, which is the bad. And on your next turn, you may not re-roll your dice. You can only roll once. And then for the positive, kill two zombies anywhere on your board. Target opponent adds two zombies to their zone three and draw a leadership token. Now, when I play solo, anytime it says for me to draw a leadership token, I draw a loot card. Helps, I guess, add to the, to the flavor of the game. At least I get something. Because sometimes there is a location or a card that says, Draw a leadership token. Well, that's no good to me when I'm playing solo because I know if I win, I win. So I, I kind of mix that up a little bit. So kill two zombies anywhere on your board and your target opponent, which is nobody. But if there was another player, I'd be adding two to their board. Oh, lucky them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to move two from my zone two. And I have to keep in mind that on my next turn, I cannot re-roll my dice. So I've used up the two. I'm going to draw another loot from here is a shotgun discard to kill three zombies in any one zone. I'm going to use my trusty bat to bat two off this board. And I'm going to take the shotgun and shoot the last one that's sitting right there looking at me. So <clears throat> that's it. Zombie advance phase. And spawn a minimum of three plus any zombie faces I rolled. There you go. So again, mechanically speaking, tower defense. They're coming towards me. I'm trying to sort of keep zone one free so I'm not taking any damage, but also at the same time, I really want to go through the location cards, meet that condition. So that's it. So I'm going to reroll, or I'm going to do my next roll. I cannot reroll this turn. So I'm stuck with whatever I got, and that's not too bad. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead first, use this bat. I'm going to bat these two out, out of zone one. And I, fortunately, I got three maps, which is great. So I'm going to use my uh, backpack to draw another loot. Chainsaw, discard to kill three zombies in zone one. So I'm going to keep that handy. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my, my shotgun. Kill three zombies in any one zone. So I'm going to discard that to kill three zombies in any one zone. I kill from zone two. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this to run. Now, remember, I can't run from anyone in zone three because they're stuck there. So I'm just going to move this zombie up from zone two to zone three, move them back a little bit. So these three have been used. And now I'm going to assign all three of these maps. Now, again, I could use them individually. One map, two map, or sorry, one location, two location, three location to go through it. But I would have to do the bad effect. So if I want to expedite and try to find that town line, I could do it this way and get through it even faster. But I would take run that risk of my board being overwhelmed with bad effects. So I'm just going to go and spend all three map icons to draw one location. I'm going to do the good effect. Draw two leadership tokens and choose one to keep. So this is a perfect example. As a solo, leadership tokens mean nothing to me. So I'm going to translate that and say, draw two loot cards and keep one to keep. Choose one to keep. I will keep the lucky charm. Discard to reroll any number of dice, including zombie dice. That seems useful to me. OK. So we've ended my action phase. The zombies move up. OK, and uh, three appear. I did not draw any, or I did not roll any zombie face dice during my turn, so I only get the minimum of three zombies in zone three. So my turn again. Here we go. Okay, I get one zombie face, two maps, two shotguns, and a bat. And that's not too bad. I think I'll keep this. If you haven't noticed, I'm not really using my abilities yet because so far my rolls are so-so. They're not bad. And I'm not going to go out of my way to try to roll more zombie faces. I don't think that's the intention. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one bat to bat these two out of here. I'm going to take two shotguns, blast, and I'm going to shoot two from over here. And I'm going to use the two map faces to draw one location and do both the good and the bad. And the bad here is advance three zombies, one zone on your board. You may advance the same zombie multiple times. So let's do that first. So three zombies, one, two. Three. And then the good, 
On your, on your next turn, your gun results kill two zombies in any zone or deal two to the mutant. Draw a leadership token. So I'm not drawing a leadership token, but I am drawing a loot card. I get the Molotov cocktail. Not bad. Okay, so <clears throat> on my next turn, shotguns count as two blasts or two zombies I can kill. So zombies advance. And then I add one base of three plus the number that I rolled, which is one. So there's four. Oh, let's, yeah, let's keep you facing that way. That's okay. And that's it. So I'm going to roll. Of course, I get no shotgun. I get a lot of bats and two backpacks. This should be enough. Okay, let's uh, use this as an example. So I'm going to use each one of these individually, which does six damage. So there are six in here. So all of these get knocked out. I just did a full on bat swing left and right. And instead of using each individual loot card, uh, sorry, each individual pack pack to draw one loot card, I'm going to assign two, which draws me a follower. So you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to draw the top card of the follower and I get the rambling stoner. We are all dust in the wind dudes. We add one zombie to your zones two and three, and that's when he takes damage. I don't think it's when you take damage. I'm assuming it's when he takes damage. So I'm going to put that follow here. That's not fun, but that's okay. And that ends it. So now I, if I wanted to, I haven't ended my turn. If I wanted to, I could see if I could kill some zombies, but I don't think I will. So we're going to do zombie advance and minimum of three plus the one that I rolled. So that's four. And here we go. Okay, so we've got the shotgun. So these shotguns now count as singles. This one doesn't apply the effect that I have. It's only on your next turn. So that was sort of a lost opportunity. I have one map. Uh, I've got nobody in my zone one. So you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to keep that loot. I'm going to try to roll a few more here. I got another zombie, another shotgun. Let's roll all three here. Okay, got another map, a bat. And this, okay. So fortunately, I see that I can use my special ability because I have two zombie dice that I've rolled, plus the shotgun. And according to the X-Cop, I can kill one zombie in zone one, zone two, and zone three. So once I've used this ability, I can no longer use that shotgun on its own. It's been used as part of my special ability. And honestly, I'd rather take two kills than just a single one that this would offer me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my special ability. I'm going to kill one from here and one from here. I've got my baseball bat that I can't use to bat anything, so that's lost. And I'm going to sign. You know what? I'm just going to get through it really quick. Sir, I'm going to sign one map to draw one location, and I'm going to do the bat. Discard a loot card. I'm okay with that. I will discard. I'll discard my lucky charm. And then I'm going to sign another map to draw another location. Add two zombies to your zone two. So two zombies to zone two come back. And there we go. How many locations? One, two, three, four, five. We've gone through five, so we're we're almost nearing that town line, hopefully, the, the stack with the town line in there. And that's it. So what I'm going to do is it's now the uh, advanced zombie. I add my base minimum of three zombies to zone three, plus two more because I rolled two zombie faces. And there you go. So we're ready to go again. Okay, another two zombie faces. We got a couple runs and a bat. The bat I'll keep. I'm gonna try to reroll these ones. I get a bat and two maps, I'll take that. So I'm gonna use two bats, one each. Uh, one, two uh, zombies per bat. So I bat these guys out. Okay, I'm going to sign one map, uh, one map face to draw uh, two location cards. So I'm going to draw the first one and do the bad. Awaken the mutant zombie. So once I awaken the mutant zombie, uh, if I had the miniature, I, or in my case, I would probably use the berserker, just place him or her on the board, and I assign seven tokens. Now, I'm making this game kind of hard, which is adding five to the base of two. <clears throat> two health, so he has seven tokens. He's awakened, perfect example. We do that one, and now I'm going to sign another map to draw another location. Hopefully the timeline, oh no, the back road. Awaken the mutant zombie. So in this situation, because he's already awakened, I would be awakening him again. And he already has full health, 
which means I'm assigning now. <laughs> wow, this quickly turned into uh, the opposite of what I thought it was going to turn into. I thought this was going to be a win for me. I'm going to double up his health because he gets another stack of health. So he has 14 health in total. Okay, so I'm going to use this bat to bat off this one zombie that's there. I can't use the other bat because it doesn't do anything for me. I'm going to go ahead I'm going to discard my Molotov Cocktail to uh, do two damage to the mutant zombie. So I do two damage. And I'm going to discard the Book of the Dead to do one damage to the mutant zombie. Okay, I'm chipping away. And that's it. There's nothing else I can do. So, before the mutant zombie awakened, I would just move and advance all the zombies and spawn new zombies. But now he is awakened, so I'm going to draw the first card, or top card, from the mutant zombie deck. And he's going to add one zombie to zone 2 and two zo zombies to zone 3. Lucky me. So, one zombie to zone 2, two zombies to zone 3. And now they advance. And then I add my base of 3. Zombies to zone 3, plus the number that I rolled of zombie faces, which is 2. And now I get to start. Here we go. Okay, I rolled one zombie, a zombie face, two runs, two backpacks, and a shotgun. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-roll. I'm going to re-roll these two, or these three. I get another shotgun. I get a bat, which I'm okay with, and another bat. You know what? I think I'll stick with this. Okay, so first I'm going to use my two shotgun blasts to shoot the zombie mutant twice. And my two bats here, because they do uh, two damage each to a zombie, I take all, all, all four from zone one. And the one backpack that I have uh, will be to draw a loot card. And I get an axe, discard to kill two, zone, two zombies in zone one. Okay, I'll keep that. Okay, now it's the mutant zombie's turn. He's going to activate all zombies. All players add one zombie to their zone three. So one zombie to here. And now they advance. They're all going to advance forward. Spawn the minimum of three. Plus the number of zombie faces I rolled. So as you can see, the gameplay is very quick. Very easy phases to follow through. And... Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, it's it's adding up. Oh, not bad. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so let's try to... I can't re-roll this one. I'm going to try to re-roll... How many can I get here? Okay, so I'm going to re-roll these ones. I'm going to re-roll this one again. Okay. Oh, this is not great. So I get two zombie phases. I get four maps, which is okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to discard my axe to kill two zombies in zone one. So I'll take out these two. I'm going to discard the chainsaw to, dis to kill three zo zombies in zone one. So I take out these three, so I'm left with two. Okay, and now I'm going to use each one of these separately. So I can draw four locations, and I'm hoping one of them is a town line. Okay, so I'm going to assign this one to draw a location card. It's a town line! Thank goodness. The game ends. After a harrowing trial, the end is in sight. You've escaped ground zero and reached the edge of the town. It's time for a celebration! But just a moment, you must still discover what has happened to the rest of the world, and only time will tell if you have a, if you have built a crew capable of surviving it. Well, me and the rambling stoner, probably not. So, I've reached a town line, and immediately the game ends. And under normal circumstances, I had a couple cards where I was drawing uh, leadership tokens. So I would have looked those, at those leadership tokens, uh, flipped them over, see how many points they were worth. I would also include the number of points that my followers provided me, as well as the damage that I did to the zombie mutant. I would add those victory points up as well. And I believe that is how you would tally the score. I don't think you add the number of zombies. You get, uh, yeah, the leadership value tokens of every follower, uh, leadership tokens, and add one leadership point for each unfilled wound space on your character board. So I would have six because I didn't take any damage. So there you go. So if I was playing with more than uh, more than uh, one person here, then we would see who is the most valuable player with the number of victory points that we have. But as a solo game, I typically, and even if I played multiplayer, I wouldn't care for the victory points. I think we just sort of try to survive as a team. 
and you're trying to mess up your friends at the same time. You don't want to mess them up too much because if they die, the whole game ends anyways. So you're not trying to be too competitive, just enough that you're providing yourself a little bit of an edge so that you're not going to die anytime soon. So uh, there you go. That was Run, Fight, or Die uh, by Gray Fox Games. A fun sort of, I'm going to call a, a Yahtzee dice chucking zombie tower defense type game. Uh, where you are trying to escape the city by traversing through the town uh, and finding loot, trying to survive, uh, staying ahead of the zombie pack that's coming after you, uh, and as well as the mutant zombie, all at the same time uh, trying your best not to die. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, my overall thoughts on this game is it's it's very light. It's it's quick. You roll dice, you assign it. There's you know you only you don't have too many choices to choose from. So it's very straightforward. How you choose it, when to use your loot cards, it's great. Having the right kind of followers with you and hopefully finding the location cards that actually provide you that sort of boost, that bonus. Uh, you might want to weigh the risk. Do you want to go through the location cards as quickly as possible? So maybe when I have you know, three maps, I don't want to assign them separately to go through three cards. I only want to get one card, but then it, you know, I'm, I'm lagging behind. I may not reach that town line fast enough. Um, on top of that, uh, you want to sort of uh, balance, uh, you know, those those pros and cons, those uh, good, uh, bad and good effects that take place when you draw those location cards, and hope and cross your fingers that you have the right kind of loot and the right rolls to mitigate the whatever you know bad happens from those locations. Uh, in my games, I find that uh, for for a solo game, setting up with a two-player location deck is not enough. I like it a bit more of a challenge, so I actually have included the whole deck. So uh, the bottom five, I shuffle the town line in there, and I'll put the rest of the 12 cards on top, and I'll try to get through it. And given the other aspects that, I, that I've modified, so for example, whenever it says to draw a leadership card, I draw a loot card. And on top of that, I don't allow zone three. I can't run away from zombies in zone three. I feel that kind of uh, adding those extra location cards to the stack balances the difficulty. There are games where it is a nail biter. I am down to maybe three cards left in the location. I've got a lot of zombies coming in, and I've even had one game where uh, that was it. I didn't. I had to draw a location card. I took the chance that the location card, the one of the three location cards that I pulled, was a town line because I had about about eight, eight or ten zombies in zone one, and I didn't pull it. So they all moved forward, and I got more than more than a handful of bites on my neck. So by doing so, it makes the game a bit more. I wouldn't call it necessarily has to be challenging like this, but for me, sometimes I want to amp it up. But if I want a sort of a light, easy dice rolling game, yeah, I follow the same setup rules, just a, a, a two-player setup for the location cards on a solo mission, and uh, and it's okay. So it's too bad that I don't have the rest of the components for the campaign, but in this situation, I don't think a campaign is necessary. I feel like these are this kind of game is more for one-offs. It's for that quick, easy to set up, shuffle a few cards, set up your deck, pull out that bag of zombies, have your friends, sit with you and just start rolling. And the downtime, again, as I mentioned, between players, not too bad. Uh, you're rolling quickly, and as long as someone's not sitting there thinking, oh, should I do all three at the same time? Or should I do one at, no, maybe I should go back to three, no. Then you know what, find a new friend. But in this case, you can just quickly make the decision. You know what you wanna do. You wanna get some bonus effect for doing it. You, you, you're you not stressing out because you rolled a couple zombie faces because you know that you'll be able to, you know, maximize, you know, their the your character's special ability, and then you continue making your run for it. So uh, there you go, everyone. That was Run, Fight, or Die, Reloaded by Gray Fox Games. Uh, I enjoy it, and uh, I'm glad that, uh, thanks for, uh, for taking time to be bored with me, and until next time, stay bored.